again, um, welcome everybody. It's great to have people back again to the Rural Voices uh, seminar series at the University of Galway in conjunction with the Department of Rural and Community <coughs> Development. So I think we're we're a, a while running at this stage and we've had some wonderful speakers and we definitely have uh, one of those wonderful speakers with us today. We're absolutely delighted to welcome, uh, you know, at this stage, a, a friend of ours from Monaghan, Integrated Development Company. We've worked um, very successfully via our work with the National Rural Network with um, Gabriel O'Connell from the Monaghan Integrated Development Company. And uh, again, one of these key people within the area of rural development who really has such a broad understanding of where rural development is at in Ireland. So we're absolutely delighted to welcome um, Gabriel here today. Gabriel is the CEO of Man and Integrated Development Company, and he has been in situ for about 21 years, which is a, a, a huge uh, accolade of um, information and knowledge and everything else that goes with it. And he really has a real broad skill base in the field of rural and community development and the, ma the management, I suppose, more than anything of an integrated local development strategy. And he really has a huge expertise and experience in the area of rural development and indeed the NGO sector. And he really is recognized as an effective researcher as well as an advocate of evidence-based approach to rural planning and strategic development. Um, Gabriel, as we all very well know, who would know him, uh, is a real believer in the bottom-up approach to rural development. And he really holds significant potential for effectively delivering, I suppose, the objectives of the EU's long-term vision that we are all in touch with at the moment. And in many respects, um, Gabriel has been hugely connected to the European scene over the last number of years and has fed in very, very effectively to um, the new CAP network that we have in Ireland and the national rural network that we worked on previously, the current network, and of course, all of the other strands of networks that we have uh, right across Europe. Gabriel is a business graduate of Trinity College in Dublin. He also holds a master's of business administration. So with all of that accolade, uh, Gabriel, we're absolutely delighted to have you. And we're going to hand over to you today to talk about an, an excellent project that I was delighted to be down in Monaghan with the launch of going back a few months ago. Thanks, uh, Mara. Can you hear me OK? Yes, absolutely. Perfect. Okay. Good afternoon, uh, Mara and uh, colleagues, everybody present in the, in the webinar. Um, Delighted to, uh, I suppose, have the opportunity on behalf of the six local development companies in the southern border region uh, to share our learning and our considerations on the Leader Innovating Communities project, which we delivered over a two and a half year period. Uh, I might go straight into sharing screen here, Shane, if that's OK. Um, Everybody see that? Not coming up there yet, Gabriel. I mean, just, uh, just to, I suppose, to let everybody know we will be recording the session and the sessions do go up on YouTube after we finished. Yeah, yes, perfect. we're just Welcome coming out. out there now. Yes, okay. excellent. Okay. Okay, so I suppose just we mentioned the partners there, Man and Integrated Development, and I suppose the reason I'm presenting this is we just happen to be the lead partner, but we were, uh, other partners were allowed local development, Donegal, local development, Cavan County, local development, Leitrim Integrated Development Company, and Sligo Leitrim. So really a very broad uh, swathe across the southern border region here uh, for this project uh, and uh, trying something different and trying something new. Um, so um, Innovating Communities um, set about delivering free training and mentoring in um, a tool called design thinking. And design thinking, you'll hear a little bit more about as we go on through the presentation. But um, it can also be known as person-centered design, but it's a particular approach to tackling problems, tackling challenges, and uh, arriving at solutions. So the main aim was to strengthen the resilience and local development of uh, the community-led action, uh, and particularly looking at the leader program and making sure that pro the projects that are, are brought forward for funding can be the best possible projects and the best thought out projects possible. Um, 
just one second. Okay, so um, as I said, resilience, strength and resilience is something we hear an awful lot about today in, in our sector. And, and that's something, I suppose, the context here uh, coming from Europe in 2021, the European Commission launched a long-term vision for rural areas up to 2040. And they are looking at four main areas there to make rural areas stronger, better connected, more resilient and more prosperous. And I suppose the challenge they throw out to all the leader local action groups across, across Europe, there's almost 3,000, is how can leader contribute to these uh, objectives um, for the vision, under the vision for long-term vision for rural areas? Uh, and what and how can we support that locally? So that's the context for our challenge. Although we did start... Um, Innovating communities actually before this uh, this long term vision was articulated and published, but uh, just to show, I suppose that's the context we're working uh, within now. And in short, I suppose at a time of a major shift in economic, social, digital, and environmental paradigms, rural communities must respond collectively in a new way. And we all know our rural communities and the rural landscape is changing quite quite a bit on uh, on a daily basis. Uh, our communities and the profile of our communities are changing, the challenges are changing, and they, they require different responses. And, and communities themselves have to be part of those responses. So way back in 2020, the six local development companies in the border region met to look at this exact challenge. And we were looking to see how we can position our community groups better to make better funding applications, better thought out applications and uh, improve their general problem solving capacity. Um, just to say that there is a particular measure in leader called leader cooperation, um, and that uh, facilitates cooperation projects across leader groups, either interterritorially or across member states. So uh, that's a particular tool that we use for this. And again, we 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 definitely think this project aligned very well with the uh, the EU vision for rural areas, uh, with a view to making stronger, better connected, prosperous, and more resilient areas. Um, so Innovating Communities was born. We set about uh, designing what is effectively a training and cap cap capacity building tool for communities to improve their problem solving. And that was the main kind of focus. Just a little example of their one of the flyers uh, that we, we, we put out. Uh, and again, design thinking encourages organizations to focus on, on uh, the people we're creating for. Uh, and again, having the people who are going to use the service, uh, having them at the center of what we're designing. So I think that's really important. And again, that's quite fundamental in community development anyway. Those of us that have been working in community and rural development for years will know that you know, one of the key best best practices there is not to do it for a community, but to do it with a community and to have their involvement in arriving at the final solution. So I think that's a, a key one. So just the way we went about it there, we invited communities to uh, think about the challenges that that face them within their communities at um, particular points in time and to register these challenges, put them up on the project website, uh, invite other people in the community to comment, support or join the challenge with a view then to getting you know people behind the challenge and to uh, gain enough support to turn it into a training course and a capacity building course. So the project requirements were fairly straightforward. We outlined them there. We wanted to support and train the communities to innovate better. You know, sometimes sometimes it's, it's referred to as social innovation now, you know, and effectively it's developing a toolbox of skills to better problem solve. Um, and also to encourage more innovative and user oriented solutions in implementing a local development strategy. So again, whose strategy is this? It's not belong to the local development company. It's not belong to the lag. It's belong to the people of the area. And that's a key principle we wanted to embed there. So how can we encourage new actors in leader? 
you know, we have some very committed people in every county across the six border counties involved in LEADER, but we need new voices all the time in LEADER. We need more young people getting involved in LEADER, etc. So a key goal was to build the capacity of our communities uh, and to embrace the opportunities to innovate, to identify, deploy and sustain highly effective innovation training uh, and support tools in a regionally coordinated way. We, we felt that the scale of the project that was required was suited to the six county structure. Now, would it have worked on a three county or a two county? It probably would. But uh, we do feel that the six counties, you know, were allowed us to come up with more innovative projects, collaborative projects. Um, so that's OK. So just very, very quickly, I'm not going to dwell on this too long, but this is happens to be the design thinking methodology and tool. So community plan and exercises tend to be kind of infrequent and in line with the beginning and ending of a program. And I suppose what we're trying to do here is uh, encourage people to identify challenges and provide feedback on an ongoing basis during the five years of a leader program. So design thinking has five, uh, it's a five stage process. It's starting with empathy um, and empathizing with the people who are affected by the problem, then clearly defining the problem, which uh, is a really important uh, stage, you know, because you know, everybody may, um, you know, articulate a challenge or a problem differently. So, so getting that clearly outlined and agreed before you try to come up with ideas to solve the problem is a really important stage and something something that the trainers um, were very, very good at. So the generating ideas, testing those ideas, retesting them, and then the final working out of a solution or materialize the solution. Uh, so it's learning by doing. It's important maybe to say that a lot of these stages will loop back at different times to re-examine uh, and to revalidate uh, where the group is in solving the challenge or solving the problem or embracing an opportunity. So I'm going to ask Marianne now just to pop in. Marianne McEnany is our uh, team leader here in the leader team in Monaghan, uh, and she would have worked closely with some of these community groups uh, and with the trainers ice cream architecture. Over to you, Marianne. You're, you're on mute there, Marianne. That would help, I suppose. <laughs> Can everyone hear me OK? Yep. Yeah. So the next slide, really, what Gabriel spoke about is the design thinking and the methodology behind it. And that's not exclusive for community projects or community, um, you know, community challenges. So we're kind of looking at how did the design thinking that can be taken from industry and, you know, translated into community context. How did that work or what were the main challenges that um, we were seeing? So one of them, I suppose, was um, we say the understanding the context that in design thinking, we look at issues or needs as challenges and to try and get that embedded into people that there was opportunities there or there was a challenge there and it could be addressed rather than an issue or an obstacle to something um, and the other stages that Gabriel went through around the collaboration the co-design your question and your assumptions empathizing with people getting people to work through the design process and um, I suppose you hear that it's a cliche maybe you trust the process but they're not to rush straight to what they uh, opportunities where or what we could do not to solve the problem before going through each of the steps and um, to really get uh, an understanding for it and um, that people in the local area might think that x is the problem and we need to do go straight to y but to really get in there to emphasize to see what the problem is for people to really understand what the issue is that people are having and then to do your research before you come up with your opportunities and um, and that was one of the i suppose the challenges that the communities would have found and the trainers would have found and um, just to kind of work through the design thinking process and then you come to the opportunities you're more sure of what the opportunities are and you have done all the steps beforehand and um, and then next thing would be you know to trial it and um, to bring the prototype i suppose is the is the 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 terminology that we're using but to trial what the idea could be what it could look like in practice and um, and not to be afraid that this this idea didn't work. Let's go back to the drawing board again. Let's go back and kind of see why it didn't work. Is there something we can tweak that would make it work further? Um, and bringing 
the new idea then and trial that out again. And as Gabriel mentioned, it is can be a loop process so that if something isn't working, go back, you get your feedback, why it's not working, and then to tweak it, and hopefully it will work the second time. And that's the whole idea of the testing and refining. Um, I suppose another thing that we found maybe a challenge when the whole project was uh, envisaged at the very beginning was before COVID and a lot of the training was going to be done in person and um, with groups coming together. It had to be, I suppose, a big pivot during COVID. A lot of it started out online then. And while the IT, you know, was really important and it was always going to be part of the design thinking and the training, um, I suppose there was a big pivot there to the use of online, but we'd still feel that, you know, it does it can't replace kind of the face-to-face -face meeting as well. Um, so if you go on to the next slide there, we can see, I suppose, what, what's the question? I suppose, what's a good outcome? What's for a training project? What do we expect at the end of a, a challenge? Um, and we're calling them challenges as much as training programs. So that the people that took part in it, they have capacity in design thinking. So they understand design thinking, they develop skills in it. And that these skills aren't just going to be used for the community project that they're doing at the time, but they can be transferable over into professional lives. We had a lot of students and young people that took part in it and that those skills they'll bring them to other community groups they're working with, to their jobs that they go on to do through college, um, and that those skills are transferable about. And it's important to have that embedded, I suppose, that design thinking in, a, in an area, in a geographical area, or in a, a community of shared interests. So that can be used again and again, and it's not something, it's a legacy of design thinking in the local area. Um, so, the very core of a training program was that there was a challenge there. There was something that needed to be addressed. So by the end of the training course, that issue was explored. There was greater understanding of it and it was resolved. There was a resolution. Now, sometimes that resolution went on that there was a further challenge there or there's a further project to be looked at, but they had learned the skills of design thinking at that stage so they could use them to go on to, I suppose, phase two on it. Um, there was new relationships built. In some cases, there was committees that were formed that would go on to or are going on currently to develop further and to do more uh, projects in a local area. You know, within the youth, there might be more. Um, within a youth organisation, there'd be more, you know, they know the people within the local area, within the local school, they might have made friendships uh, and they might have made relationships with other organisations within the local community. Um, citizen science skills, so that would be voting. A lot of the projects, um, and especially within the youth sector, a lot of the projects would be developed around environmental issues, around climate change, biodiversity, uh, food waste, you know, protection of water, a lot around that. So there was skills as part of the research voting, um, you know, research from the surveys, from going out talking to people, consulting with people, and also then skills maybe within the environmental sector as well. Um, and as I mentioned, you know, when a challenge was explored, it can be that there's an opportunity for another project out of that and the beginning of a funding proposal. So if you're going to have the research done by the time they're coming, maybe looking for funding, they have the research done, to have their backup information, to have it tried and tested so we know it's going to work or we have you know, a good indication it's going to work. So you have the beginnings of a funding proposal and a lot of that information can be transferable over. Um, and you know your local area a lot better and you know the local actors in it, you've made your linkages with it. I suppose the social capital then is enhanced as well. So if we look at the next slide, really, it's just a couple of the next two slides, really. Um, there are a couple of examples of what the projects we talk about the theory of design thinking, but what actually were the projects? So we just have there's lots of projects and there's a, a huge re repository of synopsis of what the projects were on the innovating.ie website. And it will give you, if you click into it, there's clickable, clickable links on it, and you can go into each of the counties and you can see what projects or what challenges were identified in those areas. A couple of them here, like just highlighted very uh, briefly, Donegal, they're reducing the costs and generating income for social enterprises, tackling litter issues in Drumshambo, that was in Leitrim. Sligo had to tackle an environmental change at the local level. And Cavan there had the Cavan Rehabilitation uh, Rehab Care Mobility Audit, so an audit of the, the issues there in Cavan. Uh, climate Action, Biodiversity, Sustainability for Monaghan there and creating independent artist studios. That was a kind of a unique one there in Loud. A lot of the challenges, I think nearly every county had challenges that were identified around environmental issues. Um, there were some other areas, you know, I'm going to see a video fairly shortly about rejuvenating areas, areas that have been run down. 
and you see maybe when there's new blood come back into an area that hasn't been involved in community development and design or the innovating communities was great about tapping into the people that were interested in the area but maybe were not involved in the group in the area and it was a new way of uh, in bringing those people together um, and getting I suppose the nucleus of a group formed out of that um, you know, there's ones there around community integration and um, those unique ones then in some of the tourism areas about how to develop as tourism destinations. Um, we had community spaces as um, digital hubs, reimagining community spaces, digital hubs. Um, Donegal had a lovely one where there was looking about creating a recreational corridor uh, from Donegal out to the coast. So a long, a long area that we'd um, Kind of bring that in and there were some of them were very unique to the to the counties and then there were some of them kind of a more as i said the environmental the uh, integration um areas and rejuvenating areas so even as i say it's impossible to cover all the the projects here but there is i'd encourage everyone to go and have a look on the innovating communities uh, website so innovating.ie and you can go into your county if you're from one of the six participating counties and see what projects or challenges were there what training went on in the area and to have a look at it. We're going to play you one video now um, and it was for reju a rejuvenating of a, an area. Hopefully we can get work playing here um, and just to give you an idea of what one of the projects was about. My name is Shane Rafferty and I moved to Ballymote in April 2021. And the reason for my moving here was my wife had moved from the town and we did some very young daughter and we always planned to live in, in the country down from, down from Dublin. I suppose the title to me of the course uh, really rang true because even though I had only moved to Ballymote in the preceding nine months, it, it definitely resonated with me because of the fact that regeneration was probably necessary. So I was looking at it as well in the context of my young daughter who was one at the time, and what future would she have in Ballymote? And what struck me was there was a multitude of people from different backgrounds, whether it be from business, whether it be from community groups, whether it just be new people in the town. Everyone had lots of ideas. We kept kind of coming, going about a little bit that we were perhaps going around in circles. And what we found was the root cause to all of the things we were discussing was there was the absence of a central function in the town an umbrella organization that brought everything together. And what we did was we had three, three sets of stakeholder surveys, one for the existing 25 community groups in the town, which had a list of 10 questions. We tailored then one for the businesses because the business needs were different to that of the community groups. Then we would have done one as well for general members of the public. And that was really, really important because having that extensive stakeholder engagement meant when we did have all that information gathered, it told a very positive story in that Ballymote has a lot going for it, but also that there was things that people really wanted to see change and the priorities were crystal clear on what, what the needs of the community were. I think it is understanding what members of our community can bring. Knowing what skill sets are in your community is really, really important because if you have a project in mind it means that you can go and approach them and say listen do you have capacity to work on this for the next six weeks i think for us what's extremely important is people seeing a positive outcome from a project which will use design thinking that we can then apply it and almost brand it as a positive outcome for the community and how we apply it and telling a story and I'll just hand back over after that to Gabriel and I think Gabriel is going to talk about some of um, what the outcomes from the project were. Okay. Do I need to share again, Shane? Yes, Gabriel, sorry, go ahead there. Okay. Okay, so um, as Marianne said, uh, the, the website there is a huge resource now and we would encourage people to visited those are just some of the projects there that are listed but any of the projects there are all listed by by county so certainly uh, feel free to um i mean one of the things that um we pride ourselves very strongly on in the leader program right across europe is the importance 
of sharing learning and the possibility of replication of uh, of learning. So again, this is why we felt so strongly it was important to build to build the learning here as we go along. Okay, so just to again key outcomes, and I'm just going to touch on the key outcomes and then go on to some of the the main learning uh, which was achieved. So the key outcomes we had 1,417 people trained across the six border counties in problem solving tools. So that was a uh, significantly above the target that we had set ourselves. Sorry, you were getting quite a bit of noise coming in there. Uh, maybe somebody just needs to. Um, yeah, that's great. Okay. Um, so uh, we identified 227 opportunities and 51 challenges in total were identified during the two years plus of the project. And many new cohort, cohorts were engaged. We found young people in particular really took to the process very uh, easily. And that was probably a, in line with the fact that COVID had impacted the number of uh, in-person uh, working groups and training meetings that could happen. So um, I suppose that technology came to them a little bit easier. Also migrants as well, uh, again, with the curiosity of learning about their areas and new areas they're living in, uh, it seemed to work very, very well. We had a high satisfaction rate um, of participants. Over 90% of those who participated uh, expressed that they were satisfied with uh, the program and the learning exercises. And over 70% of participants agreed that taking part in the course had helped them with new ideas for their communities. I think that was a really important learning point for us, uh, or outcome for us. And one of the novel parts about the training program was that we embedded um, 38 local co-trainers. These were people from the communities, many of them from the local development companies. They took part in the training to help co-organize the training projects and now have amassed a significant no, uh, skill base in design thinking and person-centered design that can be reused now across the six uh, border counties. And then 878 young people were trained in problem solving. And as I said, talked to it like a duck to water. So that was a, a, a really uh, welcome thing to see. And then finally, as we had a showcase uh, event. And again, the video of the full showcase event um, is also up on the innovating.ie uh, website. Just to say the project evaluators were Brendan O'Keefe and Karen Keevney, uh, and they're in the process of completing the detailed evaluation uh, of the project. But we'd have to say on behalf of the six partners, you know, the partners are very happy with the program outputs, um, all well exceed exceeded the targets that we had set ourselves at the beginning of the program. Uh, just some of the comments there that were, I suppose, fed back to the independent evaluators um, uh, are really interesting. Uh, the one, one that I particularly like is the, near the bottom there. I like the ethos of communities working with students, professionals, and professionals working with communities. Uh, so breaking down that kind of silo that you, you bring in the professional to do or the consultant to do all the work that 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 kind of line is broken and uh, everybody works together and rolls up the sleeve and, get, and, and gets involved. Um, so just other, other parts of learning that were unearthed during the value, uh, evaluation. Design thinking fits very well with the leader developmental approach. Uh, and indeed the smart village concept and the EU long-term vision for rural areas of stronger, better connected, resilient, and more prosperous rural areas. This project was probably a year and a half, two years ahead of its time uh, in relation to the, the, the uh, policy agenda now at European and national level. Design thinking methods adds value and strengthens the bottom-up approach and enhances the co-design principle where all have a voice in a community. And for many, the training was about learning new tools and methods of identifying needs and challenges in their community. And for others who had 
already a specific challenge identified in their area. It gave them the tools and a toolbox to work with effectively on the challenge. As we mentioned before, the six county, the critical mass we felt was very useful for some of the collabor collaboration projects. And the, the project provided a high level of support to local groups and would be uh, innovators um, to help them more confidently and creatively uh, work on the problems because of the systematic approach of design thinking. Uh, and also, I suppose, finally, just uh, one of the novelties of this project, it was that the process is very democratic. Um, somebody in the community identifies the idea, they put it up on the uh, website platform. Um, other people look at that and comment on it, uh, think it's a great idea, think maybe it should be done in a different way. And then eventually, if there's enough support for that project or that challenge, we can then turn it into a capacity building training course. So again, that was really, really something that I don't think had been tried anywhere else uh, across Europe. Uh, and it's something that we'll really want to tease out a little bit more in our final evaluation. Uh, here, just very quickly, uh, the um, snapshot of the sharing the learning the showcase event, which uh, we held a number of months back. Um, and the inventing communities, uh, you know, bringing the learning forward uh, that we had at that time. Uh, and here is one of the panel the discussions. And just to point out the young people involved in the panel. And again, this is just a small number of them. And again, the enthusiasm and the uh, thought process that our young people brought to this was actually very, very enlightening. And I think all the local development companies involved uh, will again and are looking at how they engage young people uh, in all their planning processes. Um, we're in the stage of planning um, for a new leader program and planning for a new SICA program and lots of other programs coming down the line. So, I mean, what the innovating community stressed to us was the importance of engaging future generations and the people that are going to be living with the consequences of the programs that we implement. So we're very, very, very conscious of that. A um, couple of observations here. Um, Today's rural challenges are complex and require new ways for communities to engage in problem, problem solve. And just some examples of those are climate change, um, migration, you know, the face of our communities are changing and having to change very quickly, responding uh, to uh, needs, our farmer community are having to respond to significant challenges. Our transport sector will have to change uh, also in relation to climate tra uh, transition. So uh, again, what innovating communities taught us is that our communities, um, when asked, will step up, will identify and will work on challenges with the, with a proper structured uh, uh, support. Uh, the place-based approach is not just about funding. Uh, it means harnessing the skills of the rural area and digging deep to engage a wider cohort of creative and passionate people um, in a developmental process. And just, I suppose, uh, one of the things we would reflect on is that, you know, um, you know, many community development groups uh, right across Ireland um, do fantastic work and often say to us in local development companies, we're getting tired, profile of our group is getting older, and sometimes they struggle with getting that new membership and getting the new competencies that are needed to deal with some of the challenges coming forward. So this was, Innovating Communities was a new way of helping them uh, to do that. Uh, and that was critically important uh, for the leader method as well. Um, I recently presented on this project in Spain um, to the European Commission, and they asked me to identify a number of policy recommendations because it was a policy forum. So I just thought I'd share those here as well. Um, I suppose just the first one was the leader program funding. 
is currently insig insufficient uh, for the scale of the rural challenge. And that's something I suppose that all of us working in the the rural sector at the moment would be reflecting on, um, you know, our small businesses, um, the transformation that's needed in a, due to a lot of the challenges that I mentioned there earlier. You know, there is a significant amount of work to be done in rural areas to keep it, uh, to keep rural areas competitive and to keep them uh, as areas where people can work and sustain and grow uh, and to keep them resilient as well. Just also to say, I suppose, for the European audience at that time, there is a, a number of other EU funds along with the fund EAFRD that LIDA comes from. Um, and the CLLD is a community-led local development. That's effectively the leader element of the CAP. But there is potential for a CLLD element in all the other funds like the ESF, ERDF, and indeed other ones. And each member state can decide to allocate a percentage wedge of each one of those funds and allocate it down to the ground, to local action groups to be delivered using a method like LEADER. That's not currently been done uh, in Ireland and has not currently been done in a lot of European countries. And it is in some. Um, the beauty of it where it has been used, it provides a very integrated approach uh, across the EU funds and across many many of the policy areas. Um, leader cooperation is a key developmental tool for rural areas and for the six partners involved and for Monan Integrated as a, as a lead partner, look at this is not easy work. This is uh, alongside your normal work in the leader and community development programs. Uh, and um, But what it does do is it uh, extends your reach in terms of what leader can do and explores new boundaries and looks at maybe the future of leader and the future for your areas in a little bit more of a, a systematic way. Um, leader has a strong synergy with the new concept coming forward of smart villages, that new policy agenda, which really for us in Ireland is very, very like leader uh, and it's using that leader method, but uh, I suppose embracing a more village, small town led focus um, and looking, looking at it from a more place based uh, approach. So again, you know, supporting uh, social innovation, we think, is probably a really important thing from the Smart Village agenda, and programs like Leader are really well positioned to try and do that, and possibly to embrace more uh, cooperation projects like Innovating Communities, um, and also to be more experimental, uh, and indeed these programs need to allow us to be more experimental in our approach in working with communities to tackle these challenges that they face. And as I say, place matters and our communities are changing. So the leader program is ideally placed to drive uh, that rural innovation and reinforce and empower place-based development. Um, I suppose leader is over 30 years old now. And from its early days, it was very clear that it was a place-based program. Um, and it was also, you know, a slightly different governance approach where, you know, the people on the ground were put in charge of what uh, a leader strategy would do and how it would be delivered. So we think that's still really relevant in terms of dealing with the modern challenges for communities and indeed with the long-term vision for rural areas and the four main uh, um, uh, strategies there. I just want to do a couple of acknowledgement here, coming to an end, Shane. Uh, the six uh, local action groups in the Southern Border region, we want to thank them for uh, approving the projects for funding and showing the confidence in them in the six uh, respective counties. Um, Department of Rural and Community Development, the LIDO unit, uh, Dimna Harney and her team there, we want to give a, a particular thank you there because they they worked with us. This was probably one of the largest leader cooperation projects possibly across Europe in the outgoing program. Um, and again, uh, we had a bit of convincing to do there, but they were very willing to work with us and to make sure it worked effectively and to deal with any, any barriers that came up along the way. So we really want to 
acknowledge that. Um, all the six local development companies, our boards and our staff who embrace the project and embedded it into our community development activities. So we really need, we needed our colleagues in the site gap program and in other parts of the company to work with us on this. Uh, I suppose we couldn't uh, uh, leave it to the, the small core of leader staff. So that worked really well. And and, and uh, to say a big thanks, thank you to those. Um, and I suppose to the volunteers and many of them from the staff of the local development companies across the other programs and volunteers out on the ground that came forward to put themselves forward to be trained as a co-trainer and to then sit in and work with the trainers on some of the training sessions and the challenge sessions. They're out there now. They're a resource that we will continue to use uh, and the communities will continue to use go, going forward. And uh, thank you to Southwest College who were our academic partner and helped us with a lot of the planning um, of the project in, in, the, in the beginning. Um, and thank you to Design Thinking Trainers, Ice Cream Architecture, a Scottish firm. Um, for their work on on the on the project, and um, they worked really well, and they uh, they were faced with the obstacle of COVID when they came in and operating from from Scotland, and again truly in the uh, in the fashion of what design thinking is about, that was a problem that just needed to be worked through and to be workshopped and to be overcome, and they done that satisfactorily. And the evaluation team that I mentioned, uh, Brendan and Karen, who I suppose rather uniquely as well, we had uh, our evaluation started at the very beginning of the project. It was a longitudinal uh, evaluation. They joined almost every project meeting. Uh, they took notes and they learned as we went along. They done a midterm evaluation and provided feed very, very useful feedback. Uh, and that was built in then to uh, the final learning. I also want to acknowledge uh, Colette McEntee, our Innovating Communities Project Coordinator, Coordinator, who has moved on to Pastures Greener as the project has finished. But Colette put her own unique stamp on this project, um, was very, very dedicated to it, Work, working with six partners and all the staff and a trainer contractor uh, can be challenging. Uh, she managed that uh, very, very effectively uh, and uh, a big recognition to Colette for, for all her work on that. Um, again, just acknowledging all the, all the partner organizations there involved. Um, we also had a couple of uh, uh, local partners, um, Manic and Combi Lift here in Monaghan and Manic in, in, uh, in Cavan. Um, these were local companies that we got involved. They brought in some financial resources into it early on uh, also, and again, shared some of their private sector innovative, innovation thinking uh, on this. And we want to acknowledge their work and their input also. That's it for me, uh, Shane, back to you. Would you like me to share the closing video? Yes. Yes, please. Yeah. Okay. I think innovative communities are different because we all got to do like what we wanted and it wasn't like the teachers were in control and we got to all say our own opinions. We all got to discuss as like a whole class and we got to go to teams and just do what we wanted. Like no one like told us what to do. I think I will use design thinking in like college or like even in another job. Like I think it's very useful to have, like in order to know how to do. I would definitely love to see another project like this in the future for the Leecham area. There's a lot of energy. It's it's very well structured, um, and it gives everyone the opportunity to really think about what are the key stages in a project development you know, and it actually sets out small goals to go and achieve those this sort of project actually you will it brings out and activates people within the community who have the have the skill set but mightn't necessarily know that there are other people in the area to support them so i think this this sort of project is, is great for bringing a community together uh, and getting energy to deliver on something that that's collective i think design thinking could be applied to any kind of a job I think it could be useful in community service, in really any kind of a job. I don't think there's any specifications to it. I think it can be used anywhere.
certainly um, anyone who's been involved in the course and, and has stayed through to the end um, will be aware of you know the importance of developing those skills and then using those skills because they are they are part of a toolbox and making a project successful if you've got the right skill set then there's no reason why anyone who's been involved in it couldn't take those skills that they've developed through the training and use those then to mentor another group in another project subsequent to the class to the to the course um i did meet one or two of the participants had a chat with them one of them i had to chat with and yes i'd say it has actually has has, has improved my, my friendships with other people yes multiple people have been involved and it's all transparent and what i think that's what's key to this process is having full and open transparency in what we're trying to do and um, so that it can never be said that people are not clear on what we're doing or what our man mandate is. People have had the opportunity to input into our mandate, input into what people want, as opposed to mm -hmm. group saying, we think this is what they want without the stakeholder engagement. We have the data from our research that backs up what we're trying to do. So that's really, really important for us. If I was to use two words to describe innovating communities, it would be motivating and inclusive. So in terms of motivation, people come to try to solve problems. Innovating communities offers people the space to do that. And that can be very motivating for people. In terms of inclusion, everyone gets the chance to air their views or opinions. And this can be very empowering. Innovative communities is an example of how people can be brought together to look at solutions for a border region. Excellent. I think that brings us to the end, um, Gabriel, of the presentation and yeah. excellent it was. Um, I, I suppose I was down at the um, exhibition or sharing event that you had in Monaghan and I was really blown away by this project. I just thought it was such a great use of the energy and I suppose the specialisms of all the local action groups coming together, but then really seeing what the communities could do. Um, so I thought really I was super impressed with this project from the get go. So I'm just wondering, maybe there are people